hear everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you are, wherever you are. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I wish that you are having a very blessed and prosperous and tranquil life. Inshallah, Amin ya Amin. Today we'll talk about the month of Ramadan and the fifth pillar of Islam, which is fasting. Fasting, as all of you know, is one of the five pillars of Islam. The goodness of Ramadan, not only because we fast, but inside the fasting, there's many, many, many opportunities for us and many blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why this month is very different to any other month? Because it's the month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Holy Quran, the life, the, the constitution for life of the living, the distinction, the make the distinction between the right and wrong, not only for the Muslims, no, 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 no. Also for the non-Muslims. If the non-Muslim would love to see the distinction between right and wrong, go and read the Quran. And it is the history of the people before us. And it in in it as well, there's what's going to happen to the people after us. It's in it and actually inside the Quran, it is actually the origin of humanity, the sources of science and technology which have been discovered later on, and so on and so on. This actually, that's why Allah revealed this manhaj or this constitution which is called the Quran, guidance, Rabbin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, eh? Al-Hudan lil-Nas. He said, not only Hudan lil-Muslimin, guidance for mankind, not guidance for Muslim. Okay? And it is the month of giving. It's the month of provision from Allah. What do you mean by that? The beginning of Ramadan is mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The middle of Ramadan is uh, forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the end of Ramadan is to being victorious and to be shielded from the, the fire of hell. Inside this month, inside this month, any sunnah that you do or any good action that you do in Ramadan, its reward will be equivalent to the reward of a fard outside Ramadan. And any fard in Ramadan will be equivalent to 70 fard in reward in any other month. So this is how Allah will give us this kind of multiple or the abundance of reward in Ramadan. Inside Ramadan, one of the blessings of Ramadan is a night. Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. Far more better than the worship of 83 years, which is 1,000 months. Okay. This is when we look at this uh, night at the last day, uh, 10 days of Ramadan and the odd nights and also nobody so I just kept for Allah nobody will know the reward of his or her fasting huh? at all the only one who will know that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Abu Hurairah said on the authority of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Allah said Every action, every act or action of son of Adam is for him. I will tell him what, what, what uh, he will know what, what he has. But actually, the fasting will be for me, and I am the one who will tell him and her, or you and you and you and you, the reward when I meet with you. Also, it is the month of worship. When we actually we submit our souls, we submit our uh, 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 senses, we submit our feeling and our life totally to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this could be the most blessed thing that Allah love you to do it for him. The shahr al-ibadah. Also, shahr Ramadan is shahr al-bathl wal ata, which actually the giving, the month of provision. And even Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, said in the authority of the Prophet that actually Sayyidina Jibreel used to come to revise Quran with the Prophet in Ramadan. Okay? And Prophet generosity will be more than the, the generous than the wind itself when brings the good news to us. The, the, the goodness out of what the Prophet will be more than the goodness of the Rih which coming to us. And also which this is very important to everybody. 
Forget about just the provision, forget about the personal worshiping, forget about the tradition of Quran, forget about all this. It is the month of jihad. Jihad is the utmost or the top point in the life of man. And inside this month, how many battlefields I mentioned to you today? Not all of them. First battlefield was is the, the battlefield of Badr. It was on 17th of Ramadan on the second Hijri year. And it was called the day of distinction. Distinction between the power of haq, the power of, of righteousness, and the power of, the power of falsehood. That was on the second year of Hijrah, as well as 17th of Ramadan. Also, in the month of Ramadan, the conquest of Mecca. It was on the 20th of Ramadan, on the 8th year of Hijrah. So it was a war. Also, in the month of Ramadan, the, the place called al Buwayb was Suf al-Muthanna, conquered on the 13th of Ramadan, in the 13th Hijri year, when they were actually fighting the Persian. Also, the conquest of Sindh. Sindh is in Pakistan nowadays, between Pakistan and India. This was conquered, actually, on the 92nd year of Hijrah. You know who conquered it? A young man, like your brother or your uh, son or your grandson. His name, wa his name was Muhammad ibn Qasim, and his age was 17 years old. And this meant that he was a second school student at our time now. So when you look at our children nowadays, at the age of 14, 15, 16, 17, oh, they are too young, please don't expose them. Muhammad ibn Qasim, who was the one who was leading the army, who conquered and uh, uh, ascend. Also in this month, it is the, the conquest of, uh, of Andalusia. Tariq ibn Ziyad, actually as well, in the, in the year 92 Hijri. Uh, also the conquest of Amuriya was in the year 223 Hijri, actually at the time of al Mu'tasim Billah, who was an Abbasi uh, uh, Khalifa, uh, when the woman, you remember the story of the woman, who said, oh Mu'tasama, oh Mu'tasama, which was actually uh, uh, humiliated by the people in Amuria, and he went with the army. This was actually in the two, I think, two to three Hijri, and the, the, the battlefield of Zurlaqa in, in Spain was in the month of Ramadan in the year 479 Hijri. Also, the battlefield of Hattin again is the crusade in, in uh, where, where Salah al-Din conquered it and actually claimed. Uh, Jerusalem another time it's, uh, in the year 583 Hijri. Also the battlefield of Anjalut in 26 of Ramadan in year 658 Hijri and on uh, the leadership and the leadership of Sefuddin Qutuz actually and again it's the Mughal and the Tatar. Also number 10 is uh, uh, crossing Parliff line in 1973 war on the 10th day of Ramadan. All this, all this, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, every one of you, happened in Ramadan. Now, let us talk about some of the questions which I have received. First of all, the first question is, is Ramadan the, war, the, 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 the month of worship only and the, the not working? It's absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. You can combine both of them. Okay, work and worship Allah. No, work and worship Allah. Work and worship Allah. Work and worship Allah. Why? I gave you some of the examples. During the month of Ramadan, actually, we were fasting and we were building Islamic relief and all the Muslim charities at that time, 1984, 85, 86, 87, and 8, and actually were going day and night to work from door to door, distribute leaflets, from shop to shop, from street to street, from mosque to mosque, till after Tarawih. Even between Maghrib and Tarawih, we used to go to pray in two or three mosques. One before Maghrib, another one at the time of Isha, actually in the mosque, another one at the time of Tarawih, another one at the time of actually Sarat al-Qiyam, the last dua. Not only that, I'll tell you something, brothers. During this month, we never had any iftari or sihri with our family for years because we were out, out, out from day one of Ramadan 
till the day of Eid and after the day of Eid. All of us, all of us, working, going, striving, helping, raising funds, and making public awareness to the people to respond to the needs of the people. It never was, that's a, that's a second question, that the months of laziness, I was in one of the Arab countries, and you know what? And at, at that time, at, at that time, actually, uh, what was my first time to be in this country during Ramadan, and we woke up after Fajr, I prayed Fajr, we look out, we want to go here and there, nobody opened the shops till Zuhr prayer. Or tell me some of them even open before Asr prayer. They were sleeping. Wrong. Absolute wrong. Absolute wrong. Okay. So a second question is, uh, did or does, is, is, does, does the fasting regulate and organize your time as a Muslim? Oh, absolutely right. Because actually, yes, we know what time we take our iftari, what time we take our sahri, what time we pray, what time we wake up, what time we make qiyam layl what time we make atikaf, and so on, so on, so on. It's a month of regulation and organization. Also, actually, it corrects some of our habits. It leads us to go and visit mosque quite often. In the, in the other days, quite often we don't go and pray jama'ah in the mosque. Either we pray at work, or we pray with our family, or pray it alone. But in Ramadan, quite often we go there to do this prayer in the mosque. And it is also another question is, does the month of Ramadan is changing your life and they, uh, um, discover your potentials? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. What actually, uh, when we went uh, to register uh, Islamic Relief uh, in the United Nations in New York, it was in the last 10 days or the last three days of Ramadan. And we were fasting, all of us were fasting, three of us went uh, to New York. And we landed without breaking our fasting. We broke our fasting in the hotel. Then we decided to sit down, actually, to relax, to discuss what is going to be uh, 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 discussed uh, the second day. And we have agreed together uh, that actually to be led uh, by uh, in the discussion by one of our senior brothers, his name was Khalid, is Khalid, and he gave us all the names uh, on all the uh, questions that were going to be asked the following day. We were for hours discussing these points, and we travel when I was doing this, and we uh, uh, went next day to the big hall, which have about 50 or 100 uh, ambassadors to ask us. To be very honestly, to be very honestly, we were asked the same question has been raised by Khalid the night before. And this is Futuhat, Rabbaniya. So traveling, fasting, breaking the fasting, staying the whole night to revise what are going to be discussed next day, and going to the show. We were asked the same questions at the same point, and at the end of the day, actually, I came down and no decision was made. Okay, so what I have done, one of the individuals told me in, in the room, go and go around and uh, lobby everybody, even if you don't know at the time what do you mean by lobbying. Uh, she, said, she told me, uh, go and give uh, you, you, uh, information about your organization to all the ambassadors. I did that. Unfortunately, I keep always saying that there were three Arab ambassadors at the time. They turned their back to me. I ignored them. And they went around and around until Friday came. And I was told by another ambassador that actually we are going to be putting you on a roster status for two years. I said, what? I went to the stage, took the microphone in my hand, and the chairwoman, uh, the little chairman, uh, she told me, can you come down, sir? I said, no, I'm not coming down. I've been here for the week, and they give you everything you want. And you, why you gave me a roster status? Uh, the situation was يعني, difficult. 
till the Irish ambassador raised his hand and said, I support Islamic religion. We have to fight in Ramadan in a different high level at United Nations to take our rights. So the month of, oh, yes, yes, yes. No, 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 no. And we did it. And the ambassador said, come next week, next Monday, and then we'll discuss Islamic relief issue, uh, uh, issue on a Monday morning, 9 o'clock. And I'll give the chance to our one of the ambassadors to read, which is objecting the presence of Islamic relief at, at United Nations. Monday morning, I came back. And alhamdulillah, the decision was after, after another Arab ambassador said, OK, I'm going to support you, which was the Sudanese ambassador. And they gave a very good speech about Islamic Leaf. And we have got two people to support Islamic Leaf at the time. And we got the registration. So we fought. We fought hard to get our rights inside United Nations. OK. What do we need? Another question came to me. And what do we need to achieve in Ramadan? What? We need to win heaven in Ramadan. We need to help people in Ramadan. We need to bring happiness and joy and tranquility to everyone in Ramadan. We need to be drawing the a smile on the faces of the children in Ramadan and after Ramadan. And this is what we did as, as a group of young uh, uh, people uh, from the 80s and 90s. And we introduced the word of volunteerism to the Muslim community in the West from the far west in Canada and America, France, Germany, England, uh, and, and others, Sweden, and, and, and. And this is what we achieved. Nowadays, after 40 years, we can find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of organizations coming from different parts of the west, actually following what we have done 40 years ago. And this is Ramadan. And this is Ramadan, which I want you. Ramadan is not the month of laziness, Ramadan is not the month of backwardness, Ramadan is the month of discovering, of achieving, of excelling, of fasting, of striving, of giving, of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and winning heaven and winning this life as well. Jazakumullah khair, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah khair.